Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're doing well. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily, my podcast all about knitting and cross stitch. Today you have stumbled across a knitting episode. I have a lot of new cast ons to show you guys this time around. No finished objects. Last week was, or not last week, last knitting episode was the episode of finished objects and now I just have a whole bunch of new cast ons to show you. So hopefully that's okay. Uh, before we jump on in, there are two things that I do have to announce. First of all being the date. Today is September 14th, 2020. And as well, there are two places that you can find me on the internet. The first is on Instagram at birch.and.lily and the second is on Ravelry at Birch and Lily. So yeah, thank you guys for joining me again. Let's jump into what I've been working on the past two weeks. So the first project I have here in a Birch Grove bag, this is a pair of socks that I just cast on. They are the MASH socks, which is a pattern by Sari Nordland. I am knitting them up in Woolberry Fiber Co. on their simple sock base, which I believe has been discontinued. Um, this is a very, very old skein. So old, in fact, that it has the old Woolberry label <laughs> inside of it, but beautiful yarn. This is called Sock Talk and their simple sock base is a 7525. So lots of beautiful different colorful speckles on a cream base. As always, creams seem to blow out on my phone, but uh, you'll definitely see what's going on with the socks. So I'll show you these first on the needles and then I'll put them on blockers just so you can see the pattern a little bit better because it is very intricate. Um, but these are the MASH socks. So I have cast these on on 2.25 millimeter US1 needles, 60 stitches this time around. There is a twisted rib for the cuff and then it moves into the pattern. You can definitely see the pretty speckles all throughout this skein but let me pop it on a blocker. So you can see this beautiful pattern going on on it. All twisted stitches, and then you can see the little bobbles going throughout in between these beautiful like Celtic cable portions. Those bobbles are some of the easiest bobbles I have ever knit. Um, they, I don't want to give it away, but they're very simple. It's not like the typical bobble where you'll knit one way on the right side, then knit back on the wrong side, then do a whole bunch of other stuff. This is all on the right side, quick and easy. Totally have it memorized. I love these bobbles. <laughs> um, the only thing I would say about this sock, it comes in two sizes, 60 stitches and 72 stitches. And the 60 stitches is a little bit snug because of all the cables but I feel like the 72 stitches would be a little big. Um, when I put them on the blockers, I can tell though that they will stretch out some when I block them and the fit should get a little bit better, but I do wish there was a size in between the 60 and the 72. And I'm not even sure, yeah, I don't think there's a way that you could change it up so that it would work that way. So you're kind of stuck with either the 60 or the 72. So that would be my only complaint per se about these socks, but I love them otherwise. Now that I am past the Celtic cable section, it's just all those bobbles, easy, have it memorized, should go pretty dang quick. Um, the pattern does call for a slip stitch heel flap and gusset, I think, some sort of heel flap and gusset, um, which is what I'll be doing. That fits my feet the best. And otherwise, yeah, I'm just gonna keep working away on these socks. They're beautiful, I love them and We'll see how I do. So the second project that I've been working on is in another Birch Grove bag, which means it must be a pair of socks. <laughs> uh, this is actually a new design of mine. I swear I haven't designed anything new in months. This whole summer has just been, I don't know, I haven't had any inspiration, but it has hit me now and I have a whole bunch of ideas. So this is one of those new ideas. I am knitting these socks out of Ottoman Indigo yarn. This is on their classic sock base, which is a 7525. And this colorway is called Rosewood. Now, if you've been watching me for a while, you would have seen this quite a while ago in a shawl design that I was working on, which I have given up on. It has sat for months and I've hit the point now with my knitting and my cross stitch that if it's been sitting for a really long time, either it's out of season, which happens a lot with my cross stitch. I don't feel like working on Christmas stuff in the middle of summer. 
Um, but with knitting, if it sat for a couple months, I need to pick it up and see if I enjoy working on it again. And if I don't, then it needs to be taken apart. So said shawl design <laughs> was taken apart and I'm going to design a whole bunch of socks with that yarn. I just, I, socks are my thing. I enjoy them. They're fast. Satisfaction comes quicker, I guess is what I like about them too. Not that I don't mind doing a sweater or a shawl, but I don't know. I have another shawl on the needles that isn't a design of mine, but I haven't touched it in months and I think that one needs to come apart too because I'm just not feeling them lately. I'm liking the socks. Anyways, that ramble aside, let me show you my new design. So here they are. I am, oops, these are twisted funny on the blocker. I'm thinking I'm going to call these the wheat field socks. Um, now I won't give too much away about them, obviously, because it's a new design, but there is a eye of partridge, heel flapping gusset, typical gusset shaping, two by two rib, and then this really pretty kind of wheat looking design. So I'm really enjoying these. I should hopefully have these out for testing within the next couple weeks. I really only need to finish one sock before I can write the pattern up and then they'll be ready for testing. So if you aren't following me on Instagram, be sure to do so because that will probably be the first place that I announce that I'm looking for testers for these. So that is all I will say about them. I don't want to give too much away, but I think these will be called the Wheatfield socks. Okay, let's jump into something that isn't socks. These have, or this rather, has been in hibernation for a wee bit, but this was one project that when I pulled out and started working on it, I really enjoyed it again. So that is great. I'm excited. I'm loving working on it right now. Anyways, I have this sweater in this bag here by That Crafty Little Fox. And this is my nurtured sweater. It's a pattern by Andrea Mowry. Uh, the last time I showed this to you guys, I think I had the one sleeve done. That is where the progress keeper was when I picked it up, so that's what I'm gonna go with. But uh, here's that one sleeve that I had complete. I now have it on waist yarn on hold. Um, you do the two sleeves first for this pattern and then you attach them to the body when you start knitting the body. So first sleeve is done. And I have somewhere in here started working on the second one and I've got quite a bit done. I think I did nine increases on the other sleeve. So I have three more left on this one and both sleeves will be finished. I have the pattern memorized for this now, so it's moving along very quickly. Anyways, let's jump into the yarn and the needles for this project. This yarn is Woolberry Fiber Co. Uh, the colorway is my favorite sweater and I can't remember the base. Perry Natural Worsted. So it's 100% Superwash Merino. It's so squishy and so wonderful. I love it so much. Um, this I did purchase in a kit that they had last year. Um, they had a kit for the nurtured sweater and you could buy a sweater quantity of yarn. But I think this color they've had since then. So definitely something to keep your eyes out for if you like my favorite sweater. It's an absolutely gorgeous like emerald D foresty green. Needle-wise, um, for my ribbing needle, so for the cuffs and such, I did use a 3.5 millimeter needle. I believe that's a US 4. And for the body of the sleeves, the body of the sweater, everything else, I'm using a 4 millimeter needle, which is a US 6. So I think I did have to drop down a couple needle sizes from what Andrea used in the pattern herself. I find I always have to do that with her pattern. She must knit very tight. Um, but I am on gauge going well. I'm knitting a size medium. I did go up from my usual size small just because I wanted to really, really, really make sure that this was nice and baggy and cozy. Um, you'll have seen a picture, I'm sure, on the screen of what it's like, but it's a very boxy cropped sweater and I want to make sure for sure that it's going to be that way. Um, I did hit gauge when I did my swatch, so I'm not like terribly worried, but I figured jumping up to a medium was fine. I have the yarn for it, so why not? So that is what I've done. And honestly, so far trying on these sleeves, I think I'm glad I did because they are definitely a snugger fit and they are, well, once I block them, they'll grow a wee bit. Um, 
Not tons though, because this is not super wash yarn. But, oh, I might have said earlier we're super wash. This is not super wash. This is just 100% natural merino. Um, not itchy though, I must say. But anyways, it won't grow too much because of that. So I'm glad I went up because the sleeves are snug, but they're not like sausage casing snug. So yeah, that is nurtured sweater. I definitely think by next time I can have both sleeves done and maybe get a start on the body. I've really been enjoying working on these or this in general while watching movies and stuff because it's easy. I have the pattern memorized like I said so it's really no thinking whatsoever. And since this is like the only thing I have a progress keeper on anymore because I keep forgetting to put them on, I did move it on this. <laughs> I have not put progress keepers on my socks in I don't know how long. I just keep forgetting to do it. <laughs> but I have some hanging up there still and then I don't know the rest of them must be strewn around the house somewhere because I'm missing a lot off of my little that thing. My little chicken wire board thing. There are a lot of empty spots on there, so I need to go on a progress keeper hunt and find those before my puppy eats them. So this is another project that you guys have seen before. I have it in yet another Birch Grove bag, and this cute little pin on here is from the Crafting Tree House. So adorable. I think I would like to put it on... I like having it here because I like seeing it all the time, but I also kind of want to put it on my backpack that has like all the rest of my pins. I'm conflicted. I think he'll just stay here for now because I like seeing him. But anyways, these are my husband's socks. Every year for Christmas, I knit him a pair of socks. That is the only pair of socks that he gets all year because he has massive feet. <laughs> um, he is about a size 12, 13 in US sizes, so he gets one pair of socks a year because they take forever to knit. Anyways, I am knitting these out of a self-striping skein of yarn. This is from Eat Knit Dye Yarn on their 7525 base. This colorway is called Assistant to the Regional Manager. If you have watched The Office, you will know what that means. Um, my husband is a huge fan of The Office. It's probably his favorite TV show. So these socks are perfect for him and he's so excited for them. So, last time, I think I was about halfway through the leg. I've now finished the leg on these and put in my heel flap and gusset. So, onto the foot, still decreasing my gusset um, stitches. I was working on these on a drive this weekend um, and I was able to get quite a bit done. So, I'm hoping to get past the gusset stitches soon. So that maybe the next time, if we go to a movie at the movie theater, I can work on this. We'll see. Um, but really enjoying this, nice and simple. I cast on 68 stitches for these. He has quite slim feet. So 64 is a little too snug. I have tried that before for him and he just found them a little tight. So I did 64 stitches. I did a two by two rib um 2.25 millimeter us1 needles i think that's about all that's super fancy on these it's a slip stitch heel flap and gusset yeah simple vanilla sock nothing crazy nice knitting he doesn't really like anything patterned so i usually just find some cool self-striping yarn every year and that's what he gets is a simple vanilla sock so he likes it he's happy that's all that matters to me and I cast on one final sock pattern. Um, if you watched my last knitting episode, you probably remembered that I cast on the Nemesis socks by Ambrose Smith. I did pull those out. Um, someone had mentioned, and I don't know why I didn't think of this, but I was using a 100% superwash merino yarn for the socks. And if I was knitting a pair of socks for myself, I would be fine with that. Like I would know how to take care of them and know that they were more of just a slipper sock. But I am knitting these as a gift and they're a gift for someone who this is their first pair of hand knit socks. So I decided that it probably wasn't the best idea and I should just rip them out now while I wasn't too far. So I did that and I ended up picking a new skein of yarn for them and a new pattern actually. I changed my mind. 
I do that a lot. Anyways, it is in a bag from Studio in the Green. And I am knitting this up out of this skein of yarn. This is Good For You yarn, their Kettle Steps base. And it is 40% Superwash Merino, 40% Baby Llama, and 20% Nylon. So it's very soft and fluffy. It's got a little bit of a halo to it from the Baby Llama, but it makes for a very cozy pair of socks. And I couldn't tell you what the colorway is, it's just numbered, but whatever purple one is on their website, I'm sure is this. So anyways, I am knitting the Humbug socks. This pattern was a like mystery knit along, Christmas mystery knit along from Ambro Smith. I think last Christmas, it might have been the Christmas before, but I think it was last. Anyways, it's available now as a full pattern. Um, and so that is what I decided to cast on. I am using 2.25 millimeter needles, which is a US one. I did a two by two rib. The pattern calls for something a little bit different, but I wanted to make sure that the top of the socks was nice and snug for said gift recipient so that they fit them well. And then here is the pattern. So it's pretty simple. If I poke my fingers in here, you can see there is little eyelets running on the inside of each of those ribbed panels. But I wanted something that had a little bit of ribbing to it still so that I knew it would have a snugger fit um, on this person's leg, just because for a sock for someone, you're always kind of guessing a little bit, unless you have measurements, and I don't, because they don't live near me. So I know their foot shoe size, but otherwise, I don't know tons else. So I cast on 64 stitches for these. I'm sure they will be fine. Most people who I've knit for who have like a size seven and a half, eight foot, which is what they have, have been 64 stitches. I don't think it's ever been any different. So these should fit just fine, but I am loving these. This pattern as well is very easy to memorize, which I love. If I can memorize it and not have to stare at a page all the time, it is the pattern for me. <laughs> so these are the humbug socks and I have been enjoying them a lot. So that brings me to the end of all of my projects for this episode. If you have any questions about what I talked about this week, please be sure to ask down in the comments. I would love to help you out and hopefully answer any questions that you have. Um, as well, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I really, really appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. Um, also giving this video a thumbs up or ringing the little bell down below so you get notifications when I upload videos. All of those things really help my channel out a lot and it makes it so that I can keep doing this for you guys. I love it so much and I love the support as well. I really appreciate it. And yeah, now that that spiel's done, the video's pretty much done. So I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're healthy and safe and looking forward to fall. I'm so excited. I put up all of my fall decorations the other day. So I am ready for fall, so ready for fall. But thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you again in two weeks for a knitting episode, if that is all you're interested in. If you're interested in cross stitch though, next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern time, there will be a cross stitch video uploaded. So definitely check me out. Like I said, every week at 10 a.m. Eastern time, there is a new video. Um, I am rambling. Thank you so much for watching guys. Take care, bye.